Hello and welcome back to another live session with Nana Ayibia for Jana, a mystic and a life coach. My name is Jonathan Morningstar. How are you, sir? I'm doing very well, sir. Yourself? I'm doing good also. Okay. Um, one time I came across these hand gestures mm -hmm. and they say it's mudras. Okay. One time I was, I was actually, one, someone was sharing his, um, how do you call it, his story. Mm -hmm. And he said, whenever he talks to his child, they listen. But any, anybody who talks to that child, they don't listen. And later on, they said, oh, they have some signs they do and the child pays attention. Mm -hmm. So what, what are actually mudras? Uh, okay. Thank you very much. And let's say a good morning, good afternoon to our viewers. Yeah, mudras are just um, the hand gestures, mystical hand gestures that represent some deities or represent some mystical sciences so if one is able to understand the positioning of the fingers and then the gestures of the hands as it is related to those kind of deities they are able to implement whatever it is that they have within their minds for instance somebody who is seeking to protect himself there's a position of the hands, the fingers, that is able to help you to generate a very strong aura around you to protect you against some energies. For instance, when I am feeling sleepy and I'm feeling very sleepy, for instance, when I'm driving, you know, the way I work hard, at times you are driving and you are feeling very sleepy, you don't want to sleep, you don't, you don't know what to do. Recall something. Lion yawning. Okay. You do that with a mudra like this. You open your mouth like this and then you hold this mudra for some time, then the sleep is no more. Instantly. Instantly. We'll try that one. You call it tiger yawning. Ah! For some time. You have to stiff, stiffen all the fingers. You open your mouth wide. Then instantly the sleeping will go. So when I'm driving fire at time, I'm feeling sleepy. That's all you Put this thumb here and you, you you press this thing down. This place should be here. Like you press it down for some time, then you press it for some time, then the sleep goes. Wow. You know why? Because all these our fingers represent some parts of, I mean some of the organs in our system. So when you press here, you have an influence in your system. And it's able to clear all the kind of sleepiness that you have in your mind. So yes, mudras are a powerful way of controlling even beings. At times, you can use mudras to create hypnotism. You want somebody to behave and act how you want him to, you can use the mudras and then the person begins to do what you want. Because the postures of the hand, if you are able to replicate that in the system of the person, you can control the mind of that person. So mudras are, I guess, gestures of the hands and the fingers that represent some of the deities and they are able to replicate the abilities here on this planet. So I know you can see that in mysticism, even in normal traditional setup, some of the mystical people, they know what to do. But with me, I have a lot of mudras that I perform. It's so important. When I'm in public, the crowd, I have a mudra I hold. When I'm driving in the night, even the two hands are there, but I have a mudra that I hold. When, at time when I even want to eat and I need quick digestion. For instance, I have a program. I have to go to a TV program or radio program and I'm very hungry. Or maybe before I return, I might not be to eat because it will be late. So I'm, as I'm going to eat, I need to facilitate quick digestion so that I will be able to digest the food. So as I'm eating, I'll hold a mudra. So I'm eating the food and quickly the food will get digested. Won't you get hungry? Eh? Won't you get hungry? Not necessarily. Yes, I see when you are so satisfied and you have to go on a set or something, it is not really not the best. Okay. After when you uh, you can't satisfy, you feel sleepy, dull, and kind of thing. So I'm saying I'm going to TV by six. I have to leave home by four. So, but I'm late. So 4:30 I'm still home, and I want to eat my food before going. It means that the food might digest before I get to the studio. So as I'm eating, you hold that mudra, then the food will get digested quick. You know, not only that, you want to sleep very quick because you have a program tomorrow. You don't sleep early, you might not be able to wake up early. 
But now you're not feeling sleepy. What do you do? You perform a midrash that you can sleep early and wake up early. When I want to work, say in the night, I start work from by 10 or 11. By 6 p.m., I should be sleeping. So how do I sleep at 6 o'clock when I don't feel like sleeping? It's difficult, right? Yes. But if I want to lie down for the normal sleep to come, I might, I might be hanging around to be 8, 8.30. So if I sleep around 8, 8.30, how can I wake up by 10? But if I say I want to sleep by 6, 6.30, I will sleep. Because I have a mudra that will hold us. I lie down, I close my eyes, I hold the mudra. Within 15, 20 minutes now, I'm gone. Can you, can you teach us the mudra? I won't. <laughs> Anyway, <coughs> sorry, I will take some of the mudras before we leave, maybe five or six mudras. Okay. Mudra for protection, okay. for peace of mind, for calmness. I can teach some few mudras here. Okay. But trust me, these are good things. See, it is said that these are our bodies are weapon. We must be able to learn all the secrets of this our body. See, I, as soon as uh, you see somebody preparing a meal that is your favorite, you see yourself salivating, right? Yes. It's like you're going to eat the food. It's not for you. So this is our body. It relates to our external environment. There are many things that happen here. We will be able to use our body to change how things happen around us. So mudras are just uh, physical gestures of the hands and the fingers that are able to represent the deities or the way they do things, especially if we are aspiring for some things to happen. And also, because the organs in our body is able to control us, mudras are able to manipulate the organs in our body. So, for instance, if I want to sleep, and then the sleep is not coming, and I hold a mudra, it means that any organ in the body that fosters sleep, that mudra will be able to, you know, facilitate that kind of process so that quickly sleep comes. Or I'm feeling sleepy, I don't want to sleep. The mudra that I do will be able to affect an organ in my system that will clear the sleep. So this you just one, showed us. Yeah, like I showed this one. If one is sleepy, especially drivers, most of the accidents that we see on our routes, about half of them is due to drivers driving and then feeling sleepy. Even one second of a sleep can cause a great accident. I tell you, you're feeling sleepy. You think, okay, I'm home. I just want to go. I can't stop. Just a second dozing off can kill you. So many times I'm driving and I feel sleepy. I can't stop. But I will have to stop the sleep so that I don't have to go and kill myself. So like I'm saying, you can do lion yawning or tiger yawning. Or you use the thumb, you press it all the way down. See, your hand should be here. Your little finger should not touch. Okay. So it should be like this. So the thumb presses here. Then the tray... Fingers here and then the little finger you don't touch with it like this. Always you should connect your tongue to the pilot. It helps you to generate enough energy for some of these mystical things. So you press it down as far as you can. And then the same thing you do from here. You press it as far as you can. Do oh, it about five minutes. seconds, ten seconds. Okay. You see the sleep will just go. Because there are organs in the body. So when you press this, this mudra... You're pulling some organs in your system that clears the sleep. Okay. And when I want to sleep, when I want to sleep, <coughs> I hold this mudra. You put this thumb here, and then I cover it with all the four fingers. I do the same thing. And then I put this here, and I put this here. I lie down, and within 10 minutes maximum, I'm gone. Right first. You put the right here on the on the left side and you okay. put the left on the right side like this. And you lie down, you don't turn, you have to look up. So maybe you, you have to close your eyes. Maximum 10 minutes, you will sleep. So what if your mind is wandering around? Just do that, you will sleep. This mudra will bring the mind. So you put this one here and then you fold all the four on can it. You, can you please show the camera? Like this. Like this, you put this here. Then you put all the four on top of it. You put this one here. You put all this on top of it. Then the right goes to the left side of your body. Left goes to the right side. You lie down. Maximum 10 minutes you will sleep. Wow. Yeah. Because these are good. For me, that's, you know, somebody was asking me, you are a very hardworking person, but you seem nice. You are looking nice. You don't 
seem tired, stressed up, and I said, see, the kind of work I do, if I'm to allow this thing to affect you, like by now I'm dead and gone. I don't allow them to affect me. And I have things that I do, you know, to release stress and, you know, when one is so tired, what to do and all that. So mudras are so important. If you go to the eastern part of the world, you see when Indians are dancing, dancing, yes. they do like this. Yes. These are all mudras. Wow. I'm telling you. <laughs> you see the dancing, they'll be doing like this, doing like this, doing like this, they will do like this. They, do, they are all mudras. These are positions. And they have meanings. Okay, so when they are dancing, they are talking. Because the mudras have meaning, meanings. And also, it also has some kind of influence in the astral realm. They have some kind of uh, deities that they have some connection with. Okay? So mudras are something we should learn. For kids that want to be, you know, smart in class, there are some mudras you can do. Um, and many other things. Somebody who has lost appetite, you want to eat enough, there's a mudra you can do. So all these medicines aren't even necessary? No, no, no. Right? See, in ancient times, we were demanding more on our own personal energy and the herbs. All these kind of drugstore and those, we didn't need them before. For instance, somebody who knows the mudra of healing, you, you do it consistently and constantly, it is very difficult for you to get sick. Because see, like I'm telling you, the mudras have connection with the organs in our body. So when these organs are, you know, are being affected with the way we do our fingers and our gestures of our hands, it really affects our organs. And at times, the kind of ailments and some of these things that are um, troubling us, we're able to release ourselves from the tension and the stress and all that. So mudras are good. And for devotees, you know, we do a lot of mudras. Me, anytime... I sit down, I do a lot of mudras, a lot of them. I sit in the crowd where there are so many people that you can't trust everybody. At times, some of them are just evil. You can't trust them. There's a mudras I do. At times, I visit people. People, you can see they are so evil. Only one person there, but any girl who has chest, any people will be so evil, you know, I do but this just by being around this person, it didn't say we'll be away. Okay, so when I miss a person, you know, I have a mudra, I will do that. I will never be, you know, affected by whatever bad intention you have, have for me. And I say, for instance, the kind of work we do, you know, at times a woman comes to you, and you know, women get attracted to many things, especially fame, knowledge, and wealth and stuff so somebody comes to you with a bad intention and you are that sensitive to these energies there are mudras you do uh, the person said might not even have that feeling they're thinking for you again you know so mudras are very good and they have a lot of things that we can do to help us to navigate our paths in life so mudras i do them a lot especially the mudra for dispelling negative energy anytime i sit in crowd I lock these fingers like this, all the four fingers. You lock them, and then you begin to go around each other with a thumb like this. Okay? So if you do this mudra, what you are doing is that you create a whirlwind wound around your aura, and it moves like this. Okay. So it's like you sit here, and there's a wave of energy around you all the way from now, and it's going this way, so nothing can penetrate you. Okay. But if you really want the person who is trying anything against you to so have some kind of negative energy instantaneously, you don't just do it. You bring it to where your navel is. Okay. And then the whole ear okay. should be able to be opposite the navel. So you see, my navel is here. Okay. So when I clock this, I don't just do it like this, but I bring it here under the navel. So when I hold this, the navel will be in the, in middle, the middle of this. Okay. And I begin to hurl here. So instantaneously, if anybody is sitting down trying anything against you, the person is going to feel some fire. Is that what happened in Dumesia? I do that all the time. No, 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 no. <laughs> Anywhere I go, I do. Anywhere I'm in crowd where I do this kind of mudra a lot. A very powerful mudra. Okay? I don't know whether you have seen President Trump. Yes. Anytime he sits, he sits like this. Yes. You check all his pictures. Check all his videos and he sits. Anytime he sits, this is your wrist. See, 
I'm telling you, the body is a weapon. You should know how to manipulate it. So the wrist, it shouldn't be like this. Okay. Your wrist must be on your thigh. This wrist must be on the thigh. Then you hold it this way. So you can be like this. You can be like this. When you hold this mudra, negative energy cannot enter into your area of direction. But anytime you hold this, you are creating energy around yourself. Okay. But for you to be able to facilitate the energy to be more stronger, you have to connect the tongue to the pilot. So maybe you are in a meeting, and this meeting, all the people, they have gathered together, they want to, maybe they all belong to some societies, and they want to use their energy to suppress you. So as you sit down like this, make sure your wrist is on the thigh. It shouldn't be like this. Okay. Or it shouldn't be like this. Your wrist must be on the thigh. Move left and right, and then you lock this, and you hold it this way. You can look at the person the person speaks. And whatever negative energy the person is projecting will never affect you. You as I'm speaking, you can just go Google any of the pictures of President Trump. Anytime you see him. And recently when I went to Ethiopia, we went to the palace of Hesalasi. And they have his statue there. Like anytime he sits on his throne, the posture, they have a statue. And this is exactly what he has done, like this. I have the picture. This is exactly how he has held his mudra. It's like this all the time. So all his pictures that we saw, everything like this, because you understand. Okay. When you hold this mudra like this, people cannot affect your area of jurisdiction. If any, see, it is not always about witches and wizards. At times, the energy thoughts of people can destroy your own ambition. It can destroy your own good plans. It can destroy your own ambition in life. So you sit in crowd, and you think everybody likes you. Somebody may be thinking, now this person is doing so well. Just recently he came, he joined this, uh, this uh, company. Everything is going well as a supervisor. Because of this, they might even promote him. They are thinking evil. So they will be trying so many things. So even in a meeting, if you know some of these things, all those negative energies, there are people you meet some of your bosses, you want to speak to them at times, nervous, you can't even talk. Some people can create that. So this can even help a stage fright. Yes. Anytime I go on a stage, you think I don't have fear. Also, at times, fear is there. Especially when you go to a big crowd, when there are so many people sitting there. Some nervousness is there. So before I speak, so as I'm standing there, I'll be holding with that. So that you just take away those nervousness. That even though you take the microphone and you are, you are shaking. So it's good. You can take those panic attacks and stuff away. So especially with the protection, with you know, relaxing yourself and all that. So these are all mudras. This mudra we call prana mudra. It's any time you want to do a prayers. It's the best you hold this prana mudra. You hold this close to the heart. Okay. Because prana mudra, there will be energy that's generating from the back of your palm. Up from here, and then it projects into the heart. You want to soften your heart, you want to be mild, you want to be decent. So, anytime you want to pray, this is what you want to do. And then, if you want to do a mudra for prosperity, like you want to be successful financially, you hold this mudra. You hold the middle finger with a thumb. Both. So, anytime you sit down and you keep on holding this, you create energies, energy that will be able to enhance your prosperity, your finances. Your business, anytime you hold these mudras. But anytime you also want to become spiritual, you want to be more austere, you want to make more spiritual advancement. Anytime you sit, you hold this mudra. But this mudra is a mudra of renunciation or a mudra of austerity. So when you constantly hold this mudra, you become poor. Wow. Yes. You know why? Because at times, so much riches distract us from spiritual emancipation. Only few people are able to be very rich and still they're able to control themselves. Most people get money and that's where they begin to misbehave. Some people, they are in the churches, they are in the mosque, and they think that they are so religious. Give them money and see. Huh? Just give them money and see. <laughs> I'm telling you. Or yeah. how I can, because I say, I'm going to range over my minutes and see how many people are <laughs> so there are people like that. So if you hold this mudra, 
you can become spiritually powerful and potent. That is any time you sit with this mudra, you become austere. It's a penance mudra. But when we hear a more lucky sika. Understand? Uh -huh. But if you hold this mudra, the mudra of prosperity, it enhances your energy to create wealth, energy around you. Okay? So, and there are many other mudras, like I said. Uh, we have this chakra mudra. I hold this most of the time. And I want to destroy. Can you show <laughs> You see this mudra? Okay. We call it chakra mudra. Chakra mudra have, it have um, edges like bleed. Okay. You know, we like, we have something we call chakra. Chakra is a round thing with some powerful edges that destroys evil energy. So anytime you put the palm here, you put the, uh, the little finger to the palm, and there will one turn down here. And then when you do like this, mystically, you hold the chakra, and the chakra begins to destroy. So for instance, when I go to a program, for instance, I, I, when I went to Sunyan recently, I went to a funeral. And when we were going to the funeral, then because all fan club members, about 50 of them were with me. Then all the executives were with me. So when I went to the funeral, I saw some negative things there. So you sit down there, you have protection. But what of all these people that are following you? If something happened to anybody, so instantly I create this chakra mudra and I hurl it and I divide it into the number of people that are with me. And then instantaneously we see the chakra will be on top of everybody. So you specifically need this mudra to give everybody individual protection as you have, you're going for the program. Okay? So that's something not going to happen to somebody and then you have to come and carry the burden. So this is something I do all the time. Anytime I sit in an airplane, okay. anytime, because I don't want to be a CEO, I don't want to be a CEO. I don't want so yes, before I travel, I try to see myself there. For instance, if I'm going to the US, even from now, all the way, I'll be seeing myself there in my room. Like that, I see all this. Not that maybe I'm just thinking, I see it. Okay. So I know that okay, when I'm going, there wouldn't be any problem. But when I sit in the airplane, this is what I do. The airplane has two wings with a tail and the front. So I have to create this chakra in all this four direction. Huh? <laughs> I have to confess that there's a mantra I will recite. So when I end with the mantra, then I hold this mudra. And then instantaneously, I create this chakra first to the right wing. So to me, I see it's, a, it's wearing a big one like that, yellowish in color, so it will be wearing. From there, I create another one to the tail, then one to the left wing, and then one to where the pilot is. So clockwise. The clockwise. Okay. Then the last one, I create a very big one on top of the plane. So to me, I see that the whole plane is moving with string of chakras around. Okay. And when I land, I have to recall all these chakras by doing the same thing right from the here to the tail to the wing to the front. I call them back. What will happen if you don't call them back? No, no, I mean, you should be responsible. If you send something positive somewhere now, you should be able to get it back. Okay. It means that you need the help. And after when you don't need the help, now you do that. Now we know. You must have it. It's like I have, I have the mantra, so I have to do it and have to revoke it anytime that I get down. Anytime I travel, I do that. So if you have been with me in the airplane, as soon as the plane takes off, I have to be quiet and I have to do that. Okay? So this is the mudra for protection okay. that gives you energy. And it also dispels negative energy. So anytime you create this mudra, chakra mudra, if somebody is having any negative thing, see, it's two. The mudra of protection, this, it protects you against negative energy. So somebody is having some mystical energy, or two juju, or yeah, two pain in there, it will not affect you because you're holding this mudra. But if you do chakra mudra, the person, whatever negative energy the person wants to project against you will not harm you, but the person will get something negative in return. Okay. So that's the difference. It bounces back. It, like boomerang. Okay. It bounces back to the person. Okay. So you have to know the mudra for this chakra mudra. I mean, the mantra for the chakra mudra, you have to recite it. 
do it from time to time. It becomes part of you. Anytime you're going anywhere, you do that mudra. That's it. Okay. So, uh, do all the mudras come with um, mantra? Uh, Every mudra have a mantra. Okay. Every mudra have a mantra. When you come to our altars and you are doing offering there, like the pujari are doing, it's amazing, beautiful. You see how we do all the mudras like that. <laughs> it's beautiful. And every mudra you have to recite a mantra. And you have time where you have to feed the deities and the time you have to leave the altar. So when you're doing all the mudras, like the that you keep saying all the prayers, you do like this, you do like this, so many things. Uh, the body is a weapon, so you have to project the body in a position to go in front of the Lord. So for instance, let me show you. You go into the altar to do things. You're considered to be unclean. So how do you clean yourself? You use the mudra to clean yourself. Okay. You have to clean the eyes, the nostrils, the ear, the mouth, your chest, your heart. Every, all the, you have to clean that and you have to do that with that. So, like that. You do all that with the mood and you keep on reciting the mantras. All the way. So when you finish, before you can enter into the water. And then when you are coming out, you have to do all these mudras. Seeking for permission that you want to go out. Some of them, like the food is that you want to bless something. This mudra. You know, something like if you serve me food, I don't have to say it right there. Why are you wasting your time? You hold this mudra, face the food like this one. Instantaneously, if there's anything there, it is taken off. You have to recite something. It's a mantra to it. <laughs> In it's case of food poisoning, teach us this one. The mantra, maybe later we can just write it and put it on our platform. Okay. So, if food is there, Every day, me never say. So, mama, the answer be the be be a umwa. The yamkwa na kind of waste of time. No, <laughs> if you don't want to be affected, with, you want to thank God for your food. That's okay. Okay, you have to pray. But like for us, we offer our food to the Lord. We we are happy. God is giving us this wonderful meal. God, thank you. you. Everything belongs to you. But if only you you feel say be be a umzi na waya. There's a way that means that we take anything out. This mudra. You see the base of your pants here. Okay. You connect this thing together, you connect here, and you create this mudra. If there's anything, poison, anything in that food, you will take this out. See, mudras are powerful. I remember some time ago when we were doing, we were doing some healing. And the teacher was telling us, these are very powerful things. You should not play with it. So the one of the guy that was just talking, talking, it's like, oh, you'll be a OGDB. Mm -hmm. Because for me, as a new fighter, you, know, you might not have everything. You can see. You can only send it a little bit. So the teacher hold his mudra like that, and then he held the basic chakra and pointed to the, the eye, this place. And according to the person, it was fire. Or <laughs> like, Obi, did you want to go? So the teacher said, I guess so you said this thing contains energy. I <laughs> said, <laughs> we were many people. As said, we be the judge. Because the fingers, they are all conduits. They possess so much energy. So if food comes, you restart the mantle. That's it. You eat your food. So there are ways. Mudras are there. I've been telling people who will be give you who will talisman be who who will amulet be who will ring be who be a more hobby. And I could do by any you make it a bed. <laughs> because I know some people at the time when they arrest them, these armed robbers, they will know say they have something. Mm -hmm. They would naked you quickly, and then if you have some rings on them, they might be your trouble. I swear, but they're not trouble. <laughs> we're, <laughs> we're empty. <laughs> but with the mudras, it is energy within your mind. This knowledge, you can do things with it. Okay, so mudras, I think we have studied a lot of it on our platforms. Okay. So those are people should be doing it all the time. Because it's good. Me, I do mudras all the time. Especially when I'm driving and I see a bad omen. Maybe any man crosses me from uh, right to left, which is bad. Quickly, I have to create this mudra. And then I splash it there. I remove it there because a bad omen. Something bad is going to happen so quickly. In the sense. So these are they daily stuff that people should know. Okay. These are mystical things. Your pastor might not know. Your imam might not know. The person you have been following might not know this. And these are secrets. All that I'm thinking here, these are things that ancient times 
they are taught to only few people. You must sit under the feet of the master for a long time. The master trusts you before they give some of these things. These are mystical things. You might not know that they are very, very, very powerful. Yesterday, somebody came to me with, uh, with a testimony. There is this friend of mine. The wife was pregnant. They came to me. They have been with me all this while. Then he has given birth. So the daddy, there is some, all that I've been hearing people say, he said, Say, oh, soon soon my baby will come. If you born by me, I mean, I said, me you soon know my baby. Me, she didn't name. Say me who be that? He was speaking like that with the husband. So, wow, it was okay to her. Then I said, I said, is it the auntie? And I said, then we have feed the pan or your bar, and your bar so your bar be show. So she came from all the way from the village, and your bar. Or so your bar and I pour so I come the bar when the bar is just okay. Come on soon. I come and come and they know me. I mean, come and be brave. They don't want to go to strangers, so that's okay. Show our father, but now I'm so obedient for you. Now, according to this woman, the ban, ah, the pendant, you know, yes, yeah, I am very black. I don't know, I'm saying there's an pendant is blackish, or you mean, I am black as I am, as I said. And I told her, I said, even though it's black, and it gives you protection, so where? So the baby, I gave the baby, the baby pendant, and then my ministry will be. So this visitor said she wanted to eat fufu. So she have to go and do the fufu in the machine the way they have been doing now. So I told the woman, said the woman in China, okay, I'm fufu number. And before she will return, my men, the name I am who no base say. I said we cannot say we no catch them you. The name you now who no say. No brother say ah, my day. I said me name the ayah you. Me name the ayah you no me name my. I said ah. I said see I don't want to take it. I said man take it. When you are there, I say, "Me niya kwe." Then you man hono. I say, "Baso di fufu nba eno." I say, "Odi fufu yose oko." O mi o baso wa besa wa besa wa mchanga kwa kwa yose oko. No, I say, "No, adi asa." I say, "Oso mbeka kwa yose ni mbeko." No, I say, "Adi asa." O besa wa ndi jamu ma kusisi yeni biyo kwa yose yeni biyo yeni biyo problem. No, mo kanya no yose obeti ni obeda na juno. Oso oda yeni biyo three to four ma na yose oko. So ba no say, "Da." Yes, we knew who would have said that in all kinds of stories. And I'm saying, yes. Who knows? Maybe this person came with some something to come and harm your baby. And that's the big shit of some farmer. What do you say against that? What do I say? So these are there. So who will be here? Now, no more to hear me, but it will be voice or send me back. And so they're not coming. Yeah. After four, they're not going to know all possible coming. So if you say, you know, because they're not going to say, these things are there. They are real things. So Mudras, she learned it. My children said 10 or 11 mudras on our platform some time ago. I will telegram so. Do it. If you say, beat me away, beat me away. The Amaya can we swing up. If I can't lie for home, we skate here be any more. And do it, dear. If you find a group, you might wouldn't know. We aim it deep. But can lie for home, it will safeguard you. And don't forget, anytime you are doing mudras, you connect your tongue to the pilot. It helps you. Thank you very much, sir. Okay. And with the sleep mudra, no, mm -hmm. you still also have to recite some mantra. No, no. You just have to connect the tongue to the pilot, pilot. And then you try to draw yourself within. Okay. So it means that you have to make your mind empty for some time. Don't think of anything specific. Empty your mind. Okay? Like the one I taught. This one. You empty your mind. And then as you lie down, quickly you will sleep. Is it right goes first or? Right goes first. Okay. But you have to first do this. Do this. Okay. The tongue will be like this. Then you fold the four on top of it. Same way. Then right go and then you lie down. Okay. Within 10 minutes maximum, you will sleep. Okay. So let's mention um, mudras. So you teach us. Okay. Less five mudras at most. Okay. So like I said before. Mudra for healing. Healing. It depends on what kind of healing you're talking about. Okay? Okay. It depends. I mean, if you have, say, headache, is headache that you have, how do you use the mudra to heal headache? If you have stomach ache, what do you do to heal yourself with the mudra? So it depends. So maybe uh, if one is having headache, if, if you're having headache, there are mudras you can do to heal the headache. Okay? You use this thumb, you use the back of be your thumb. Okay. Then you touch here, and then you press the middle of your palm, the left palm. Okay. So you use the back of the thumb here. You press the agian chakra where the agian is. Okay. Like this. 
because of my cap, I can't do it. You put it here, and then you try to put your thumb in the middle like this. Then you fold with the ring finger. Okay. See, as you put the hand here, and you try to put this, it presses it, so you feel a little bit pain in the thumb. But it's okay. And then the back of this thumb goes to, to the agia side. You put it there for some time. You do breathings. One, two, three, four, five, six. One, two, three, four, five, six. You do like that for seven times, then the headache will go. Okay. If it doesn't go fully, it will be minimized to a point. Okay. Okay? So first thing, you, you, the back of your thumb, this right thumb, goes to the agia, the third eye area. Then you, you fold the thumb in the middle here. Then the ring finger comes on top of the thumb. Okay? This one is here already. Then you do the uh, turtle breathing. The turtle breathing is that you hold your breath. Then you count. One, two, three, four, five, six. Before you breathe out. One, two, three, four, five, six. You do like that for seven times. Instantaneously, the headache might go down. Wow. Yes. That's powerful. They, see, mudras are powerful. It does a lot of things. For instance, if a woman, you want to go and give birth. At that point, because time they are so step if you are able to do a mudra of safe delivery you can help yourself to give birth quick okay and there's a mudra there maybe it, it's going to be elongated maybe one day i will just maybe you can teach on our platform and the, and the platform okay. yes okay. so mudra for prosperity prosperity is what i said this the middle finger with the thumb if you hold this mudra, you connect it to your pilot. Anytime you sit like this, it enhances your energy, and that energy is able to give you prosperity. Okay. You need to understand when you hold the mudras, what happens is that it creates some special energy around you. And you can't achieve anything if you don't have energy. Okay. So the mudra, depending on the kind of mudra, then the kind of energy that will be generated. So when you hold this mudra, that is the middle finger to the thumb. This one is the mudra for prosperity. So for any time you sit down, you can sit like that, like this. All the time, you're working like this. You are creating a special energy that will gear towards you becoming successful financially. And then if you want to become spiritually potent, okay, austerity mudra, or penance mudra, that is the index finger with the thumb, the two, and the connection with the pilot. So anytime you're doing meditation for spiritual advancement, this is what you're supposed to do. But like I said, this mudra, it's connected to renunciation. So it might not help you to get wealth. Okay, so some people will say that if you hold this mudra, because this is the mudra of renunciation. Okay. You are renouncing material things so that you can get spiritual upliftment. So this mudra drives away ordinary riches and wealth, but this mudra invokes those things. Mm -hmm. So which other mudra again? Okay. Mudra for protection. Mudra for protection, I have told you already. You can hold this, this, or you can hold it where the, you have the, uh, the navel in between this hole. And you can hold these two thumbs around each other for some time. You put one like this. Or you put the wrist on your lap, wrist on your lap, and then you hold it this way. These are all mudra for protection. Okay. Or you can use the one I said, the chakra mudra. That one, that one comes mudra. with a mantra, a special mantra mm -hmm. for that. Mm -hmm. You can say novel and patch away with Funuma. A novel, Funuma. I was saying, Funuma. I bet you took the name of So when you click, clench this and you hold this, you feel that hole. Yeah. Like this. Even with this mudra, when you are doing Kundalini meditation, when you want to do Asta projection, the mudra you hold. Oh, okay. Because when there's any force, it might go through, through your navel. So you don't have to. So lift, you create the hole, and then you still have to pass through the crown. But you must create this mudra so that you can do the Kundalini meditation. So one day I will teach the Kundalini meditation. Okay. That one is a very powerful how to instantaneously leave your body. If you do it and you don't do it properly now, you can go mad. <laughs> wow. Yeah, there are people who try and you go mad because see, when the soul projects through the crown, not regulated, about 14. So all the chakra from the basic chakra like that, you have to Really small. See, the Kundalini is like a snake. Okay. See the way a snake moves? Yes. It goes here and goes here. Okay. If a snake goes straight like this one, now he breaks the ribs. Okay. So you go like this, you go like this. So when you hold this mudra, gradually you move the energy from the base of your spine. You move gradually to all the chakras, all the chakras, until when it gets to the crown chakra, and then poof. 
they go. They go south. But you must create an avenue for the soul. What do you do that? You have to create this chakra. So the navel chakra must be open. It must be guarded. So when there's going to be any negative thing now, then you'll be able to project through the navel. Okay. Mm -hmm. Wow. And will you? Are you going to teach in your upcoming school or? Yeah, when we start our school, we will teach some of these things. You have to teach people when you are standing in front of them. You can guide them how to go about. So definitely, we will learn mudras because it's part of us. Okay. That's the most important thing for any specialist. When you don't have the oil, we have the soup. You don't have the mudra. We don't have the amulet. You don't have the talisman. You don't have anything with you. How to defend yourself is through mudra. That's true. Mm -hmm. Okay. Mudra for peace. Uh, mudra for peace. Um, to be relaxing your body. What causes you to sleep is also mudra for sleep. I mean, mudra for peace. Okay. Okay. Like I told you, this one, this one, and then this one. If you do like this one, for instance, maybe somebody who is very sad and you are so never emotionally, you are sad. If you do this mudra, you can be sitting down. You do it and it relaxes you. The emotions goes down and then so it can also create peace. Okay. Mm -hmm. Then mudra for knowledge. Knowledge, I think I have taught this before. You see, when you wake up early in the morning, like I said, this finger, you have to first activate the chakras. And then you use your fingers as if you want to use it to... I mean, first, you have to use it to massage your head. Okay. You massage your head like, I'm wearing this, I can't do it. So you have to massage your head with the two, with the tips of your fingers. Okay. Like that, then imagine that you have like a lot of hair. So you want to use your fingers to straighten it. So after some time, all this, you connect your tongue to the pilot. Then you try to look down. You bring your head all the way close to your knee. You do like that, then you become very smart. So if our kids in the school, you want them to become very smart. Okay. This mudra is very good for them. Okay. In the morning, you use the tip of your fingers to massage the whole head, like you make it like you are stretching your head. After some time, you use the tips of your fingers to straighten the hair down. Even though you might not have hair, but you imagine that you have hair and you are straightening to your back. Then you connect the tongue to the pilot and you try to look down. If you do like this, blood flows into the brain. So the kids become very smart. That's me. It's a serious thing. Wow. It helps you to remember. You don't forget easily. Okay. okay. One last mudra. Our people are demanding for the mudra for digestion. Mudra for digestion. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, the mudra for digestion, the same mudra that I did this one. Because normally when it comes to the navel, the navel deals with the belly. Okay. So anything that goes to the belly, the mudra did that. So when I'm eating, First, I have to click this, connect this mudra. But I have to give it the right hand. So I will just pull this out and this one will be there. In this case, the thumb must touch the body, your belly. And then the little finger must touch here. These three fingers must be exposed. So now you eat like this. You'll be surprised as you're eating, the food is digested. Instantly. Instantaneously. So normally you finish eating and you feel dull, like you want to sleep. If you do this mudra and after you eat it, you might feel okay, you have eaten like maybe an hour or two hours ago. The food has not done on you, become dull. Because you want to go and sleep with people. When you're moody and stuff, the intelligence is not there. So this movie that helps you to uh, accelerate, you know, digestion. This. But you must first connect the two. You put it down here. This thumb comes here. Then you remove this. Make sure the three finger does not touch your body. But the little finger and the, the thumb touches your body. The literally is exposed. Okay. Now you can go ahead and eat your food. It helps you that after eating, you don't get, you know, so uh, dull. Okay. Uh, that somebody who has taken some some more money or something. <laughs> uh, now <laughs> it's like you're dull, you're quiet, yeah. you can't even reason properly, you're not smart. You're not, uh, there's a word for it, I'm looking for. Uh, you can't speak, you know, uh, the word. It's a word. Somebody who can speak eloquently, you can't speak eloquently, that kind of thing. So, okay. and with all these mudras you've taught us, with the five mudras, mm -hmm. including the digestion, mm -hmm. do they need any special mantra? No, you didn't need any mantra. Just connect your tongue to the pilot and you can do that. It's a chakra. But a chakra mudra, anytime you do the chakra, you invoke it. And when you invoke the chakra mudra, you must recite the mantra. Okay. Mm. Okay. Thank you very much for this knowledge. God bless you, sir. And do you have any last words? Uh, my last words that uh, people should understand that we have gross staff, we have mystical staff, and we have spiritual staff. So some of these things might not be knowledge that you are very familiar with. Don't see that stupidity. It's something that you might not know. You can Google and search some of these things. You have access to it. You can Google mudras, 
importance of mudras. There are so many things. Healing. Many things that mudra can do. So, at times when I hear something for the first time, what I do as a human being, I don't criticize, I don't chastise. What I do, I go and do research about it. Anytime I hear something for the first time, I have to research to know that does it have any significance? Is it real or something? Then gradually through the research, you get to understand the wow, this is there, even though I never have any idea about them. So when you hear something for the first time, don't criticize it. You might not know. Go and research about it. Come again and you'll be able to and we speak about it. So that's what I do. So I would advise people, learn. Learn from people. Because at times there are many things you don't know. Somebody knows. So when you hear something for the first time, research on it and make sure you don't just criticize without having any idea about what it is. Thank you. Thank you very much. And I encourage the viewers to also practice because I, I think it's not... You, you, you alone can't... Yes, so people should practice all the things I've been teaching. It's going to help. Comment, comment on the under the post. Thank you very much for staying with us. Yeah. Thank you.